In the waning years of the Second Age, when the shadows of Middle-earth grew long and ominous, the fair land of Eregion stood as a beacon of elven craftsmanship and wisdom. Nestled at the feet of the misty mountains, near the western gate of Khazad-dûm, Eregion was a realm where elves and dwarves forged a rare friendship, united by their love of crafting and the secrets of the earth. At the heart of Eregion's splendor was Celebrimbor, the greatest of the elven smiths, grandson of Feanor, who had crafted the legendary Silmarils. Celebrimbor's skill was unmatched, and under his guidance, the Gwaithai Myrdain, the people of the Jewelsmiths, created wonders that rivaled the glory of Valinor. Their works were renowned, but none so much as the Rings of Power. It was in these days that a stranger came to a region, fair of form and enchanting of speech. He named himself Anatar, the Lord of Gifts, and he offered knowledge and guidance to the elven smiths, though some, like Gil-galad, the High King in Linden, and Elrond, his herald, mistrusted this stranger and refused his counsel, Celebrimbor and his smiths welcomed him, eager to learn and create marvels beyond imagination. Under Anatar's tutelage, the elven smiths forged rings of great power. Together, they crafted the seven rings for the dwarf lords and the nine rings for mortal men. Yet in secret and without Anatar's knowledge, Celebrimbor forged the three rings for the elves, Vilya, Narya, and Nenya, unsullied by Anatar's touch. These rings were the most potent, embodying the purest of the elves' desires to heal and preserve. But Anatar was not who he seemed. He was Sauron, the Dark Lord in fair disguise. In the fires of Mount Doom, he forged the One Ring, a master ring to control all others. When he donned it, the elves perceived his treachery. A great fear fell upon them, and Celebrimbor realized they had been deceived. In wrath and betrayal, Sauron demanded that the elves surrender all the rings of power. Celebrimbor refused, and so began the war of the elves and Sauron. From the black lands of Mordor, Sauron unleashed his legions, orcs, trolls, and other fell creatures, marching upon a region with fire and fury. The skies darkened as Sauron's forces encircled a region. The elves fought valiantly, their blades gleaming under a sun veiled by smoke. Celebrimbor, though a master of crafts, took up arms to defend his people and their sacred creations. Messages were sent in haste to Gilgalad in Linden, pleading for aid. As the siege tightened, Celebrimbor entrusted the three rings to swift messengers. Vilya and Narya were sent to Gilgalad and Sirdan at the Grey Havens, while Nenya was given to Galadriel, who had already sensed the growing peril and departed to the sanctuary of Lothlorien. Sauron's assault was relentless. The walls of Eregion trembled under the onslaught. In a desperate bid to save his people, Celebrimbor led a sortie, his hammer and tongs replaced by sword and shield. The clash of steel rang through the valleys as elves and orcs fell alike. But the might of Sauron was too great. The gates of Austin Edhill, the chief city of Eregion, were breached. Flames consumed the once great halls of the elven smiths. Amidst the chaos, Celebrimbor stood his ground, a solitary figure amidst the ruin, refusing to flee or surrender. Captured by Sauron's forces, Celebrimbor was brought before the Dark Lord. Sauron demanded the whereabouts of the Three Rings. Despite unspeakable torment, Celebrimbor held silent, his spirit unbroken. Enraged by his defiance, Sauron ordered his death. Celebrimbor's body was put upon a pike, used as a banner to demoralize the remaining elven defenders. As hope seemed lost, a host led by Elrond arrived from Linden. Though his forces were fewer than needed to break the siege, Elrond fought with courage, striving to save what he could of Eregion. Seeing the tides turning, Sauron unleashed fresh reserves, pushing Elrond's forces back. Realizing that they could not hold, Elrond ordered a retreat. 
In that dire moment, the dwarves of Khazad Doom emerged. Hearing of the plight of their elven friends, they sallied forth under the leadership of King Durin III. Their axes gleamed, and their shields held firm against the waves of orcs. The dwarves' unexpected assault provided a crucial diversion. Together, Elrond and the dwarves managed to rescue many elves, leading them northward. They fled through a narrow pass, and with the dwarves' aid, the forces of Sauron were held at bay just long enough. Elrond established a refuge in the hidden valley of Imladris, later known as Rivendell, a sanctuary against the growing darkness. Despite these efforts, Eregion was lost. The once beautiful land was left desolate, its people scattered or slain. Sauron reclaimed the Nine and the Seven Rings that had not been sent away, distributing them to corruptible men and dwarves to further his dominion. However, the Three Rings remained hidden from his grasp, a beacon of hope for the Elves. The aftermath of the Battle of Eregion had far-reaching consequences. Sauron's power grew unchecked, and he declared himself King of Middle-earth. Many realms fell under his shadow, yet the seeds of resistance had been sown. Gilgalad and Elendel, a survivor from the sunken Isle of Numenor, began to forge an alliance that would challenge Sauron's supremacy. The memory of Celebrimbor's sacrifice, his steadfastness in the face of torment, became a legend among the elves and a testament to the resilience of the free peoples. The dwarves of Khazad-dûm closed their gates, sealing themselves away, and their halls became a distant echo in the songs of later ages. Elrond's refuge in Rivendell blossomed into a bastion of wisdom and healing. It was there that the heirs of Isildur would one day find solace, and where councils of the wise would shape the fate of Middle-earth. The Battle of Eregion marked a turning point, the unveiling of Sauron's true malice and the scattering of the Elves' strength. But it also kindled the flames of unity among Elves, men, and Dwarves. Though the shadows deepened, the spirit of resistance endured. In the years that followed, the tales of Eregion's fall were told and retold, a somber reminder of the cost of pride and the perils of deceit. Yet, amid the sorrow, there was a glimmer of hope. For as long as the Three Rings remained beyond Sauron's reach, the light of the Eldar would not be extinguished. And so, in the hidden valleys and distant shores, the free peoples prepared for the trials yet to come, their fates intertwined by the threads of loss and the enduring quest for freedom against the encroaching darkness.